So we're going to look at composting and one of the key things about composting is what you can actually put in the compost bin and what ratios of the, the items you're going to put in there. So there's two key components really, one being nitrogen rich um, items and one being carbon rich items. And as a general rule of thumb, you sort of want an equal split. So the nitrogen rich items are like leaves, vegetable peelings, um, grass cuttings are a good one, flower heads when you've um, dead headed your borders, weeds but not weeds with a tap root or weeds that are in seed so try and avoid those. The carbon rich items are fallen leaves so dead leaves, twiggy material, cardboard so that can be any form so I've just put a couple of toilet rolls in there as an example um, or just broken up cardboard. If, you, if you're putting cardboard in try and get the sort with the holes in it the corrugated sort and break it up quite small sort of that sort of size that puts air into your compost and that help, helps it to break down don't use cardboard that's got a plastic lining on it because that won't degrade um, other things like tea bags as well they're a good one paper shredding that's a great one if you're putting it in with a lot of grass cuttings because it helps to soak up the moisture if you put in twigs in try not to put anything in sort of thicker than your little finger so that's sort of the maximum sort of diameter if you like also as well as, as a company we use biodegradable packaging so we send out all our items in packaging the little compost yeah um, and, and obviously again if you can break that down cut it up the smaller the better it will break down quicker also to speed up your compost we've got a little product there that's our compost accelerator just make it up with warm water but it's all on so all, all the instructions are on there um, and that'll, that should help to speed up the process of breaking down your compost. Um, the other thing is as well, if you're building a new compost bin, when you start, try and layer the bottom with damp paper or damp cardboard before you build the compost bin on top of it or before you place your, your Dalek bin or whatever sort it is on, on, on top and that'll attract worms because worms are the, one of the key things that you need. The, main, the best variety of worm is called a tiger worm and you can order those through on, on the internet or mail order. Um, so once you get worms into your compost heap, they do loads of the work for you. The Dalek bins, they're the black ones, aren't they? They're the black they ones, just... yeah, they just look like a Dalek. Yeah, um, yeah. Without the pointy yeah, bit on. Pointy bit um, there, yeah. But yeah, but the other thing about your, your compost bin as well um, is the situation of it. You can put it in any situation, really. Um, sun, shade, doesn't matter. If you have it in the sun, it is slightly better because it heats up quicker. Mm. But you will find that it also, because of the heat, dries out quicker. Right. So you might have to add more, more moisture to it or more nitrogen rich yeah. items as a percentage to your carbon rich items. Right. Yeah, keep the lid on, that'll keep the heat in. Um, the heat will um, help with the, the breaking down process and also it can, kill, it can kill some of the, the seeds that are in there as well. Yeah. yeah. Like grass if you com if you you'll know if your compost is too wet because it does start to smell, yeah, um, right. and it looks wet. Right. Um, and the thing to do then is to add more carbon-rich yeah. items. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. your toilet yeah. rolls, your your cardboard, um, paper shredded. That's great for what I tend to do when I've cut my lawn. If I've got paper shreddings, yeah. I'll mix it up before I even put it in. Right. So I'll just you know toss it about a bit and then throw it in my bin yeah. so it's got like an even mix and that tends to stop it getting too wet and if you're going to put in any large amount of compostable material at once this is a good thing to use as well you can use that as and when but that is a good tip if you if you're going to put a lot of stuff in say edge trimmings or something like that or lawn trimmings um, give it a dose of that as well and that'll kick start it again with grass clippings you're going to need to put plenty of carbon in it because that's obviously applied in water, yeah. which will make it wetter again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people say you go four to one ratio of carbon right. to nitrogen stuff. So I just go 50-50 and just keep looking at it. That's yeah. the thing. If yeah. you keep looking at it at your bin, yeah. um, you'll know when it's ready for one up. If, it's, if it looks wet, then you need to add carbon material. If it looks dry, you need to get some more, gr more grass cuttings or there. nitrogen yeah. items. When I've uh, trimmed any hedges or bushes and there's, there's um, material like this that's quite thick, again, the best thing to do is cut it up small. And I find the easiest way is to use a, an old lawn mower. I wouldn't use a brand new lawn mower. I'd use an old lawn mower and just lay it on the, on the grass and just run over it. And then that'll 
chop it all up and it, obviously if you've got one that's got a bin on it it'll collect it all up for you and then it, it's nicely chopped up ready for your compost bin i wouldn't try and chop anything that sort of diameter because it, it's just going to damage your mower um we haven't all got a shredder so i just use a, an old mower um the other thing before you start to shred it and chop it up just check the the trimmings for any any beneficial insects like ladybirds um, or the ladybird larva, um, just so you're not killing them. Um, just either you can pick them off and, and move them somewhere safe, or just leave your clippings for a bit, and they'll they'll find their own way out. Um, and that saves you killing all the the beneficial insects. Mm. Yeah, about a meter square is, is an ideal size. Yeah. Um, one because obviously the vol. It, if you've got a big garden, you need the volume because especially at this time of year, you're starting to get lots of grass cuttings, edge trimmings, stuff from your vegetable garden, flower heads, they're all going in there and you can soon fill it. You need plenty of space. Yeah, so about a metre square. Three, three pallets. Three pallets. Yeah, just, just screw together. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pallets all together. Yeah. And it's made three metre square bins. Yeah, I know. You technically only need one. As, but you'll have to turn it. Yeah. Um, and it's what what I mean by that is once it gets to sort of this level, to turn it, you've got to turn it out. So you'd have to tip it out to put it back in. Right. Whereas this method with three bins, you move from one bin to the next, then you've got a bin empty. So this one was full this morning. So we, we're turning that one into the middle one. And then in another, well, really, you can turn it anytime, but the what, best thing to do is let this one fill up again. Mm. Move the second bin into the third, first bin into second. Right. And then give that one a chance to break down even further mm. while that one, while the first one fills up again. And then by then, that one's, the, the third bin's ready for emptying. Right, okay, yeah. And it'll be really, really good compost. Yeah. So we're just turning it to aerate it. So we're gonna get plenty of air in it, which helps with the generation of heat. So all the, uh, activity in it, the worms and bacteria need the oxygen to help them break down the materials. So as, it, as the materials break down, they generate heat and it almost cooks it. A good compost heat, heat should be hot. Um, and that obviously kills seeds um, and all the, the bad bacteria and all that sort of stuff. But as you see, as I get further down, it's getting more and more dense, the compost. You see how that's, that's already eating through the cardboard huh. and through the grass, breaking everything down. Yeah. So let the worms do the work for you. This is the only work really you should need to do, just turn it. Um, you can turn it any time of year, uh, it doesn't matter. Some people will do it every two weeks. Yeah. Um, the ideal is probably every four to six weeks. Right. But personally, because I'm not in any hurry, I've got plenty of compost. Yeah. Um, I do it every six months give it a good good mix the thing is as i do it i don't just plonk it in i try and shake it yeah. and i'm adding air all the time all right, okay, yeah. it will compact obviously as you get the more more and more weight on top of it but you're gonna have to get little pockets of air yeah but you can see how many worms there are in there look yeah. it's absolutely full of them but that's the, that's one of the key things get get nature in there get the worms in apart from rats yeah, we don't want rats, um, but to avoid rats, just don't put uh, cook food in there, monitor it, you know, keep a, a close eye on it. You know, if, if you're not squeamish, that's fine. If, if you're a bit timid and you don't want to see them, just give it a couple of taps and they'll, they'll skedaddle before you, before you actually get a chance to see them. Because you'll be introducing worms back into your garden as well. As you spread the compost, you're going to be spreading the worms back in there, which helps break up your garden soil. They put air in your soil, helps your, helps your plants to grow. It's all a win-win. No hard and fast rules, just ideas. No, isn't just, it? just composting is good. It's yeah. good for the environment. Yeah. You're not throwing anything into landfill. You're reusing all your, your waste materials. Um, the garden benefits from it. Um, it also brings nature into your garden as well.
subscribe to the MV YouTube channel to be notified of regular Dave's Corner videos.